There will be no restriction imposed on economic activities, including Ramadan bazaars this year. However, Prime Minister Datu Sri Masabi Yaakob said a more refined set of SOPs would be set up for Ramadan bazaars, which would be announced at a later date. Explaining further, the Premier said the advice given by the Health Ministry would be taken into account while fine-tuning the SOPs. Saya dah beritahu yang kita tidak akan menutup perniagaan. Ya. Setakat hari ini kita tak akan tutup. Lah. Itu, itu keputusan yang yang masih lagi kita laksanakan. Ya. Saya dah sebut raya ke, bulan puasa ke, pasar Ramadan ke, pasar malam ke masih dibuka seperti biasa. Jadi saya percaya sampai tiba masanya nanti keputusan yang sama pasti akan dikekalkan. Earlier, the media reported grouses among Ramadan Bazaar traders who were worried that they would not be able to operate in view of the surge in COVID-19 cases following the spread of the Omicron variant over the past one month. In 2020, Ramadan Bazaars were not allowed nationwide to curb the spread of the pandemic. While last year, the bazaars were only prohibited in the enhanced movement control order areas. The compassionate payments for pilgrims that had to cancel their Umrah trips during the month-long temporary postponement imposed since the 8th of January will be channeled this Friday. Minister and the Prime Minister's Department, Religious Affairs, Dato Idris Ahmad said each affected pilgrim will receive 1,671 ringgit. Elaborating further in a statement, Datu Idris said the payment reflects the government's concerns for the pilgrims' welfare that were enforced to cancel their pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He further said the Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry has submitted a list of 8,027 affected pilgrims that are eligible for the payment and almost 1,000 of them do not have a Tabung Haji account. The compassionate payment will be credited directly to their TH accounts. Therefore, those without an account are urged to immediately open one by 8 in February. The government previously temporarily suspended all Umrah trips from 8 January to curb the spread of the Omicron variant. However, it was allowed again on 8 February with new standard operating procedures, including the requirement for pilgrims to receive a booster shot. The government has yet to decide whether to extend or not the subsidy for poultry farmers up to the 4th of June. Agriculture and Food Industries Minister Datu Sri Dr. Ronald Kiandi said the current subsidy is provided for the period between the 5th of February to the 4th of June, which is during the implementation of the Keluarga Malaysia Maximum Prize Control Scheme involving an allocation of more than 500 million ringgit. He said the subsidy is given to ensure the price of chicken remains below 8 ringgit and 90 cent per kilogram, compared to the market price which can reach up to 9 ringgit and 80 cent or 9 ringgit and 90 cent per kilogram. Kita kena subsidikan penternak. Sebab itu baru-baru ini diumumkan kita kabinet telah membuat keputusan untuk memberi subsidi kepada uh, penternak ayam dan juga daging dan juga ayam telur. Jadi itu memberi kesan lebih daripada setengah bilion ringgit untuk tempoh 4 bulan akan datang ini. Jadi kita pastikan bahawa harga ayam dijual pada kadar 8.90 sen sekilo pada harga pasaran, pada harga market retail. He said this after opening the large-scale Smart Paddy Field Smart SBB project at the Area Farmers Organization PBK of the Muda Agricultural Development Authority MADA C4, Kang Kong near Alostar today. He said at the moment the price of imported corn cannot be reduced since the nation do not grow corn commercially for edible feed. They are imported, hence the increase in the price of chicken. Datu Sri Ronald said a new policy to encourage corn cultivation was being drafted to reduce the country's dependence on imported corn for use as animal feed as part of the effort to control chicken prices. The markets nationwide are showing an increasing trend of chickens and eggs supplies since the government provides subsidies for the items to poultry farmers during the implementation of the Keluarga Malaysia Maximum Price Control Scheme. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Ministry KPDN HGP Enforcement Director Asman Adam said as of yesterday, the chicken supply increased by 90%, while eggs by 93%.
Jadi ini menunjukkan bahawa di segi bilangan uh, premis-premis yang menjual dan membekalkan ayam kepada masyarakat pengguna itu telah mula bertambah dengan baik. Jadi kita berharap tahap keberadaan ini akan dapat diteruskan lagi supaya memudahkan pengguna-pengguna dan juga peniaga-peniaga yang bergantung kepada kedua-kedua komoditi ini untuk mendapatkan bekalan untuk menuskan uh, perniagaan mereka. According to Asman, the ministry will conduct daily inspections at over 2,700 premises nationwide, monitoring at 6,589 premises, including on poultry farmers, wholesalers and retailers also showed that they abide by the ruling set by the government. Since the 5th of February, there were only six cases of selling chickens and eggs beyond the current ceiling price. In the same development, the KPD and HGP will step up its efforts to ensure that traders sell chicken at the new ceiling price of 8 ringgit and 90 cent per kilogram. Its Johor director, Muhammad Hairul Anwar Boro, said the price set by the government is in effect for four months from the 5th of February to the 5th of June. He hoped that traders will abide by the ruling to ensure a steady supply of chicken in the market to meet consumers' needs. Speaking after visiting the Kluarga Malaysia sales program in Banda Sri Alam, Johor Bahru, Muhammad Hyrule added that traders could also report any overcharging by their suppliers to the ministry. Cuma dia berlaku hanya di beberapa lokaliti je. Ha, bukan semua. Secara keseluruhannya ada. Eh? Dan uh, sekiranya kita uh, dapat uh, aduan uh, ataupun berdasarkan pemeriksaan dan tinjauan kita, uh, jika ini ada berlaku ni kekurangan kita akan uh, melakukan lagi uh, teruslah. He also urged consumers to use the ministry's price catcher app before making any purchases. Next, 70 million ringgit in financing benefits entrepreneurs. Stay with us. A total of 271 entrepreneurs affected by the COVID-19 crisis nationwide have received financing worth 70 million ringgit through the Sustainable Accelerate Scheme Success, launched by Permodalan Usahawan Nasional Berhad PUNB in November last year. Chairman Dato Ahmad Nazlan Idris said the initiative was specifically offered to existing PUNB entrepreneur partners to ensure their business sustainability in facing COVID-19 related challenges during the nation's economic recovery phase. He said the organization had taken strategic steps to improve the financing structure, such as offering Sharia compliant financing from 100,000 ringgit to a maximum of 10 million ringgit, with a financing period of up to seven years, according to business sectors. When the success initiative with an allocation of 100 million ringgit was first announced on 21st November last year, PUNB had said the approval process would take three working weeks for applicants with a complete set of documents. In addition, Dato Ahmad Nazlan said PUNB had shortened the approval period for financing of below 300,000 ringgit to two weeks based on the conditions set. Inshallah. Kita akan cuba sebaik mungkin lah, secepat mungkin. Kita tak nak menanggung lama. Itu untuk yang 300,000 ke bawah. Yang ke atas itu kita dalam proses untuk memendekkan lagi tempoh. Supaya usaha tidak menunggu lama lah bila dia mohon pinjam. Kami dia berkaitan dengan peluang. Timing, peluang. So, so kita memikirkan dari segala itu. He said this to reporters after attending a PUNB briefing and dialogue session with entrepreneurs in Pontian today. Initially, the maximum amount of financing provided under success was 1 million ringgit. Dato Ahmad Nazlan said 40 entrepreneurs in Joho had received 9 million ringgit in total financing through the scheme to date. A group suspected to be practicing deviant teachings in Mualimpera is suspected to be originated from a neighboring state. State Police Chief Dato Mio Farid Al Trash Wahid said there is one group that police identified in Mualim district, and this group had actually moved from a neighboring state before settling in Mualim. So, saya pun tak mahu komen sudah. Kita tunggu apa komen yang diberi oleh pihak Jawatan Kamal Islam. Perak, it's not fair for me to komen pasal siasatan dibawa oleh pihak berkenaan, agensi berkenaan. 
He said this to reporters at the Cliffordian Cycle Team CCT and Old Cliffordian Association OCA Reunion Cycling Program at Dataran Pavilion, Kuala Kangsa today. On Thursday, Dato Mio Farid al said police would work with the Para Islamic Religious Department to curb deviant teachings in the state. Prime Minister Dato Sri Sabi Yaakob wants radio stations to continue with their role in disseminating the latest information to the people. In conjunction with the World Radio Day today, he expressed confidence that radio, which has become a necessity in today's life, will continue to be relevant in the future. In a Facebook post, he said Malaysia was one of the earliest British colonies to use the radio technology, adding that radio became an important medium for the people to get information during the pre- and post-Merdeka period. The Premier further noted that radio has now become a close friend, as it is the wake-up call in the morning, a company in the afternoon, and as entertainment in the evening for the Keluarga Malaysia while driving home. The World Radio Day celebration was first organized on the initiative of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization in 2012 to recognize the contribution and role of radio. It is celebrated on 13 February every year and this year the celebration themed Radio and Confidence focuses on three sub-themes, namely trust in radio, journalism, trust and accessibility as well as trust and viability of radio stations. Meanwhile, Communications and Multimedia Minister Tansari Anwar Musa urged radio station broadcasters and operators to be more creative in delivering their service, as the communication medium has a big role in the country's development. According to him, the radio station should also always maintain the journalistic professionalism to ensure the service remains relevant and viable. Tapi kalau kita mempunyai knowledge yang luas dalam salah satu subjek, apabila kita membuat ulasan, apabila kita membuat pandangan, jadi kita akan bercakap pada satu wavelength yang sama ataupun lebih baik daripada uh, pendengar. Jadi pada saya knowledge adalah merupakan perkara yang penting untuk menentukan apa tu konten dan macam saya kata juga tadi creativity lah, creativity bagaimana kita nak menarik uh, para pendengar kerana Adanya kreativiti kita dalam waktu kita membuat penyampaian. Tan Sri Anwar expressed hope that the creativity of broadcasters, radio station operators, activists and lovers of communication through radio can jointly make the radio services in Malaysia the best and of highest quality. Brunei VTL agenda sets to be discussed. That and more in the foreign segment. Stay with us. A proposal to establish a vaccinated travel lane VTL by air between Malaysia and Brunei will be among matters to be discussed during Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob's official meet-in visit to Brunei beginning tomorrow. Malaysian High Commissioner to Brunei Darussalam Datu Raja Reza Raja Zaib Shah said the visit would also provide opportunities for both countries to discuss bilateral issues and partnership, as well as explore new cooperation post-COVID-19. Dato Raja Reza said, also on the table are cooperation in the field of health diplomacy and promotion of closer economic cooperation. Perdagangan dua hala antara Malaysia dan Brunei menunjukkan uh, peningkatan yang memberangsangkan. Sebagai contohnya, pada tahun 2021, jumlah dagangan Malaysia dan Brunei Darussalam berjumlah 8.03 bilion ringgit Malaysia. Uh, pada tahun sebelumnya, uh, iaitu tahun 2020, jumlah dagangan kedua-dua negara hanya bernilai 4.71 bilion ringgit Malaysia. Jadi peningkatan sebanyak 70.4%. The Prime Minister who is scheduled to arrive in Bandar Seri Begawan at 8:20 p.m. tomorrow will be given an official welcoming ceremony by Brunei Crown Prince Pengiran Muda Makota Al Muhtadi Billah. 
On Tuesday, that was Reis Masabri and the Malaysian delegation are scheduled to have an audience with Sultan of Brunei, Sultan Hassan al bolkiah before both leaders sit for a four-eyed meeting. During the two-day visit, the Premier is also scheduled to attend a tea event with the Malaysian diaspora in Brunei. That was Reis Masabri's official visit to the country is the first since he was appointed Prime Minister last August. Mao Malaya head coach Kim Pangun arrived in Malaysia from South Korea on Friday and is currently undergoing quarantine. According to FAM Secretary General Mohammad Saifuddin Abu Bakar, the 52 year old arrived with his goalkeeping coach Cho Jun Ho, fitness coach Dr. Gokhan Kandamir, and analyst Lim Jae Hoon, while Spanish assistant coach Pau Marti Vincente has yet to arrive as he had to undergo quarantine in his country. Mohamed Saifuddin said FAM would hold the media conference as soon as the quarantine ends to introduce Pan Gon, officially to local football fans. At the media conference, Pan Gon is expected to lay out his plans for the Harimau Malaya squad and announce the opponents selected for friendlies during the FIFA window from 21st to 29 March. Regarding the local assistant coach position after FAM had shortlisted two candidates previously, he said Pan Gon would decide on the matter soon. Pangon's first duty would be to observe the performance of the players in the 2022 Malaysia League competition, which is scheduled to start at the end of this month, before handling the national squad's centralised training camp in March. He will then lead the national squad through the third round 2023 Asian Cup qualifiers in June and try to end nearly half a century of waiting for Malaysia to qualify on merit to the final round of the Continental Level Championship. Out despite hike in COVID cases. Tune in for more updates at 12.30pm tomorrow. Till then, it's Lights Out. I'm Brendan LePaul. Goodbye for now.